Hey, what's up, everybody? Doran Aldana here from MortgageMarketingCoach.com, coming at you with another podcast episode from the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. And today we're going to talk about seven barriers to breakthrough that will hold you back. Not that may hold you back, but will hold you back if you're not aware of them because they're insidious. They are pitfalls that if you step into, they will most definitely stifle your growth, stifle your power, and stifle your ability to create outcomes that you want in your life. So the first barrier to breakthrough that I want to share with you guys today is the quintessential perennial excuse that we so often get roped into. And it's, I don't have enough time. Sound familiar? I wish there was more hours in the day. I don't have enough time. I'm too busy. Right. I know you guys never have that problem, but you can only imagine there are a few peeps in this space that have that challenge. Right. Too busy, too much going on. And so often you see mortgage professionals who are too busy to make any real money in this business. They're too busy with the minutia. They're too busy putting out fires. They're too busy in crises fighting mode and they don't have a life beyond the clutter. If you're too busy to do what's meaningful and important and valuable to you, if you're too busy to do the important things in life and you don't have an hour, two hours, three hours a day, discretionary time to do what's most important to you in your life, I got news for you. You don't have a life. You were enslaved to a J-O-B, which stands for just over broke or a journey on the way to brokeness. You don't have a real business that sets you free. You have a business that has enslaved you. Let's be real. It's a glorified job trading time for money. That's not a real business. That's enslavement with the office ball and chain. So too busy is a mantra we can get caught up into that becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. As soon as we impress that idea on our subconscious mind that we are too busy, we lose our power. We are now a victim of circumstance. In our subconscious mind, when you impress an idea upon it, it must be expressed through your reality. So it will become a self-fulfilling prophecy. You will live a life of too busy, being harried, running around like a chicken with your head cut off, getting a lot of stuff begun, but very few things done. And notice we get paid on done, not begun, right? So this is one of the biggest barriers to breakthrough. I'm too busy. I don't have enough time. We're putting off for tomorrow what must be done and should be done today because of this endless loop that we tell ourselves, stealing our power, stealing our peace, stealing our poise, and stealing our productivity. Because of this lie, we tell ourselves, I'm too busy. Bullshit. Here's the mantra of the champion. I always have enough time for what matters most. That's worth writing down, friends. I always have enough time for what matters most. Notice that is a key element of prioritization. If you look at that and you break it down, what you're saying in there is I always have enough time for what matters most. So it pre-necessitates and presupposes that you're prioritizing what matters most in your life, what matters most in your business, and you're prioritizing those things, I have another mantra, and it's this. There is no overwhelm. Just planning, prioritizing, and execution. I never feel overwhelmed. I got two businesses, four kids, two budgies, a dog, and a wife. I got a full life. I never feel overwhelmed, ever. Why? Because my mindset is there is no overwhelm. Just planning, prioritizing, and execution. So notice how what you tell yourself creates your life, manifests your reality. And notice, is that serving you or not? So that is most definitely a barrier to breakthrough. The I'm too busy mantra. I invite you to replace it with, I always have enough time for what matters most. The next barrier to breakthrough is I don't have enough money. Sound familiar? I don't have enough money. It takes money to make money. Bullshit. It takes creativity and commitment and courage to make money. 
you want to bring more value to the marketplace, it's going to take massive action. It's going to have you take action in spite of your mood, in spite of so-called risk, in spite of no certain guarantee for success. That takes courage. It takes decisiveness. It takes commitment. It takes resourcefulness. It takes creativity. It doesn't take money. Some of the biggest money-making moguls on planet Earth started with nothing but a big dream, brass balls, and the willing to follow through and commit on their dream with action. It doesn't take money to make money. It takes courage, creativity, and commitment. So when we believe this lie that it takes money to make money, we keep ourselves in a trap, a prison of our own making because that thinking got you broke. <laughs> And as long as you keep telling yourself, I can't take this action, this bold, intelligent action towards a breakthrough in my income because I don't have enough money, well, then you shut down all resourcefulness. You shut down any access to power. You shut down any avenue to do something new, to get you a new result, because that thing that is new is going to be bold and intelligent and, and, and impactful in a way that's going to stretch you out of your comfort zone. And it's going to get you saying, I don't have enough money for that. That's a risk. Instead of saying, how can I make this happen? How can I get the resources? How can I make some moves to get resourceful, to get the money or to create money or to add value such that I get more money so that I can create an upward spiral of awesomeness instead of a downward cycle of suck? It comes down to how committed you are to your breakthrough. And the fact that you don't have money is just a symptom of the fact that what you're doing ain't working. That's a symptom of doing it the hard way. So when people come to us and they're like, hey, I'd love to work with you guys, but I don't have the money. Well, welcome to the club. Pretty much all of our best, most successful clients who are doing 300 Gs a year, half a million a year, a million plus a year came to us in the same position, broke as a joke. And the only difference between those champions who rise above and conquer and the ones who stay stuck in the muck and mire of mediocrity is their level of commitment and how bad they want that breakthrough. The truly committed find a way. The merely interested, well, they'll only do it if it's convenient, if it's comfortable, if they're in the mood. And they tend to let their circumstances treat them like their bitch and tow them around by the nose and have circumstances make them the victim. They become a victim of circumstance and they wonder why they don't feel powerful and they wonder why they're not creating powerful results. So there's another barrier of breakthrough. The mantra, I don't have enough money. It takes money to make money. Screw that. It takes commitment to make money. It takes courage. It takes creativity. And it takes a winning formula. It takes a winning recipe. It takes a proven success formula. And if you don't have that proven success formula, it's costing you more to not have it than to have it. In lost opportunity cost, in wasted time and energy and effort trying to reinvent the wheel, and leaving money on the table doing things the hard way. In most cases, with rare exception, it's costing you exceedingly more to continue doing what you're doing the hard way than to invest in a proven plan and formula. People say, well, we can't afford to work with you, Dorn. No, screw that. You can't afford not to. And the reason, only reason why you're broke is you're doing it the hard way. How much longer are you willing to tolerate that? How much longer are you willing to continue to stagnate and regress and spin your wheels and throw yogurt at the fan hoping something sticks when clearly what you're doing ain't working. How much longer are you willing to bang your head against the wall doing it the hard way? Some people have a very high pain threshold. I was one of them. Man, I did it the hard way for years. I'd be so much further ahead in my life, in my career. Had I invested boldly and intelligently in my own breakthrough, in my own mentorship and coaching and support and counsel, to be able to do things the smart way, the right way, the profitable way, the fruitful way, instead of just spinning my wheels, messing around, doing it the hard way. Man, I wasted a good seven years of my career doing it the hard way, spinning my way at wheels, busting my buns, making peanuts. I'm telling you, if I could rewind the tape and invest boldly and intelligently and strategically in finding mentors who have gone the distance before me, 
and invested in my own acumen and skill and marketing superpower and mindset to be able to level up to a champion level mindset so I can create champion level results, man, I would literally light years ahead of where I'm at right now. I mean, praise the progress have come a mighty long way, but I would have turbocharged and accelerated my speed of success 10x compared to me spinning my wheels doing it the hard way for so long. And chances are there's many of you listening and watching who are in the same boat. You'd be so much further ahead if you just had a proven plan and the right mentorship, the right coaching, the right support. And so in most cases, with rare exception, it's costing us more not to have that plan than to have it, in spite of the fact it might be an investment, in spite of the fact it might be a stretch to make that investment, in spite of the fact that we might have a proclivity to say, I can't afford it. Screw that. We can't afford not to invest in our breakthrough. Otherwise, think about how many more decades we're wasting. Think about how many more lives we're not reaching. Think about the capabilities and capacities and potentialities we have locked up inside of us that aren't being tapped, that aren't being unleashed because we're spinning our wheels, reinventing the wheel, doing it the hard way. Not for me, friends. Never again. Never again. Champions always find a way to win, period. And they're willing to invest in their own success to make that happen. So with that being said, think about it like this. The person who says, I can't afford to invest in my breakthrough. I can't afford to invest boldly in finding a proven plan to create my breakthrough is like the person who's standing in front of a fire that's about to die. That's just embers. And they say to the fire, give me more heat and then I'll give you more fuel. I'll give you more logs. Well, obviously it doesn't work like that. We've got to feed the fire first and the feeding of the fire is our commitment, our creativity, and our courage. We bring those three C's to the mix. There's no limit to what's possible. That's the catalyst for breakthrough results right there. The third barrier of um, creating breakthrough results is increasing my income is going to mean I'm going to have to increase my workload. Who says? Who says that's the case? Who says that you have to trade time for money? Sure, to be successful, you're going to put it in the work. You're going to hustle your ass. You're going to work harder perhaps than you ever have before. But who says that you going from 300 Gs to 600 Gs a year means you have to double your workload? Does that mean that every top producer who's making 600 Gs, a million plus, is working double, triple, quadruple what you're doing? Chances are not. They have team. They have systems. They have policy. They have pro- protocol. They have procedure. They have a real business that works while they're not working, in their absence. What if your breakthrough is not about you working harder? What if your breakthrough is about working smarter? Stick that in your pipe and smoke it for a moment. Marinate your mind on that idea. What if your breakthrough is about working smarter, not harder? You guys with me on this? That is the access point to breakthroughs, my friends, is working smarter and not harder. But as long as you... Believe this lie, this bullshit idea that you creating a breakthrough means you have to work harder. It's going to keep you stuck in the rut you're in. That'll keep you small in the same place you've been in for who knows how long. Because it's not about working harder. It's about being more deliberate, more intentional, having a better, more effective plan and strategy. Having self-leadership where instead of making excuses, you take action. Instead of half-stepping, you follow through all the way. Instead of pulling punches, you follow through all the way. It's about self-leadership in the right direction with powerful follow-through. It's about habit cultivation, daily habits. You want to level up your the quality of your results? It's going to come down to your habits. You can't level up the quality of your results if you haven't leveled up the quality of your routine. You can't get a champ-level result if you have a chump-level routine. It ain't going to happen, is it? We often, we want the result without being willing to submit to the routine. And it just doesn't work that way. So it's not about working harder. It's about being more fruitful. It's not about putting in more hours. It's about getting more from the hours we're putting in because we're showing up more powerfully. We're showing up, leading ourselves through the day, leading ourselves 
through the stinking thinking that might stop us. And instead of letting that hold us back, we say, screw that. I'm committed to conquering, not my comfort zone. I'm committed to winning, not just wishing. I'm committed to making a difference. I'm committed to conquering, not sitting here in bed when I'm comfortable. Sure, I could be comfortable in bed at 4 a.m., but screw that. Living, Just leading my life through comfort will lead to a mighty uncomfortable life. If I'm willing to do the things most people aren't willing to do today, I'll have the results most people won't have tomorrow. And if I'm willing to do the uncomfortable, I'll have a mighty, unco- I'll have a mighty comfortable life. If I'm willing to do what's uncomfortable now, I'll be able to enjoy what's very comfortable tomorrow. Notice the paradox. It's about cultivating a habit of being comfortable, being uncomfortable. And again, that comes down to looking at what am I making a habit of every day? And is that taking me where I want to be? So it's not about increasing our workload. It's about increasing the potency and power of the productivity of the hours that we're on deck every day. We have seven, eight, maybe nine, 10 hours a day that we're in the office. How fruitful, how productive, how focused, how intentional, how strategic are those hours? Are we balls to the wall hustle, potently focused on the most profitable activities and delegating all the rest? Are we pushing the minutia, messing with the trivial many? Are we focusing on the vital few? Are we focusing on the trivial many? Top producers focus on the vital few. They delegate the trivial many to a top talent team. The mediocre majority, they get caught up doing the trivial many. They get caught up being the technician. They get caught up being the chief cook and bottle washer wearing all the hats. Notice the difference in the quality of the activity they're engaged in. Better quality, more value, high impact activities will obviously produce you better quality, higher value results. Simple as that. May not be easy, but it's relatively simple, right? So what if creating your breakthrough is not about working any harder, just working smarter? That's the big idea. The fourth barrier to breakthrough is I don't feel comfortable. This is too much pressure, too much stress. I don't feel comfortable taking this action. I don't take I don't feel comfortable making this decision. I don't feel comfortable making this bold intelligent investment in my breakthrough. I don't feel comfortable taking that action. Whatever action is required to get you to your breakthrough. That's how the mediocre majority think. I don't feel comfortable. I mean, I got four kids. I got an 11-year-old. That's one of our favorite lines. I don't want to. Sound familiar parents? I don't want to. Well, it's a good thing that that's not a prerequisite, sweetheart, because I never asked you if you wanted to. I asked you to do it. Notice how the immaturity in us does not leave us just because we're chronologically further along in age. I often don't want to do things I do. I don't want to get up at 4 in the morning, 4.30 in the morning and go to the gym. I don't want to take a cold shower. I do it anyways. Why? I'm cultivating the habit of being comfortable being uncomfortable. I want the result. Winners are influenced by the desire for pleasing results. Losers are influenced by the desire for pleasing methods, what's comfortable, what's convenient. If you look at the champions in life, they have a habit of doing things that are uncomfortable. That's why they're champions. Everyone wants to be a champion. Very few people are willing to do what it takes to become a champion. Why? Because it takes something. Like I often say, if success was easy, everyone would be fit, rich, and happy. Most people are fat, broken, unhappy. Why? Because it takes something to be rich, fit, and happy. It takes discipline. It takes effort. It takes the grind. It takes determination. It takes brass balls. It takes stick to It takes heart. It takes spirit. It takes an indomitable spirit. It takes something. It ain't going to come from your comfort zone. Your current comfort zone equals your current income zone. That's worth writing down. Your current Comfort zone equals your current income zone. So if you look at your current income, guess what? Your comfort zone is what produced that income. If you want to double, triple, quadruple your income, do you think that's going to happen by staying in your comfort zone? Of course not. All progress lies outside of your comfort zone. If you want to expand your income, you got to expand your comfort zone. How do you expand your comfort zone? Doing things that are hard, friends. Doing things that are hard. Doing things that scare you. 
doing things that have you feel pressure, have you feel what I call positive pressure. Things that cause you to feel perhaps a little stressed. I call it soaring stress. Because when you spread your wings and soar from that nest of comfort, comfort, you're going to feel a little stressed out initially. You're high in the sky. You're high above the ground. You know, gravity could get a hold of you and make you go splat. So it's soaring stress, but it's positive stress. It's called positive pain, positive pressure that will propel you to your purpose, that will propel you to higher levels of abundant living. All progress lies out of our comfort zone, friends. And as long as we tell us this, ourselves this mantra, I don't feel comfortable. I don't feel comfortable. Well, perfect. That means you're onto something. That means you're up to something big. That means you finally crawled out of your comfort zone and you stepped up to play a bigger game. That means we're onto something. That means we're on track to a champion level result. You can't get a champion level result without a champion level stretch. You can't get champion level results with a chump level stretch. You guys with me on that? So perfect. The fact you feel pressure, the fact you feel stress, the fact that you feel challenged, the fact that you feel uncomfortable means that you're onto something. That means you're playing a champion level game. So celebrate that. Say, hey, perfect. This is what I call positive pressure, baby. Bring it on. I eat positive pressure for freaking breakfast. Bring it. I got this. I'm committed to conquering, not my comfort zone. You guys with me on that? As long as you commit to your comfort zone and you coddle yourself in your comfort zone, it's going to maintain the same stagnation that got you the place you're in. And if you're happy with that, cool. But if you want bigger and better things, you can't get a champion level result with a chump level stretch. It's just not going to happen. You can't get maximums with minimums. It ain't going to happen. All progress lies outside of our comfort zone. So if you don't feel comfortable with it, perfect. That's a good sign. That means we're on to something, baby. That means we're up to something big. Discomfort is a sign that your dream is colliding with your comfort zone. When you feel pressure, when you feel stress, when you feel discomfort, when you're feeling like you're stretched beyond what you would normally be inclined to stretch yourself, that's a perfect sign because what it means is your dream and your comfort zone are colliding. And you either can commit to your dream and conquer, or you can commit to your comfort zone and leads to complacency, neglect, stagnation, regression, unhappiness, depression, all that muck and mire of mediocrity is in your comfort zone. That's why winning is inextricably linked with cultivating the habit of being uncomfortable. And that's why when you start to conquer and you start to adopt this champion level mindset, people are going to think you're weird. Like people think I'm weird taking cold showers. Dude, you're crazy. What's up with that? You like shrinkage? You're a sucker for punishment. What what, what the heck's wrong with you? You know, you're paying for hot water. Why don't you use it? (laughs) Well, I do it not because I can't afford the hot water. I do it because I want to cultivate a warrior mentality. I want to cultivate a champion psychology of being comfortable, being uncomfortable, because if I can do that first thing in the morning, I can conquer any obstacle all day long. I eat challenges for freaking breakfast. Why? Because I've cultivated that mindset, that psychology. It doesn't happen just because I want it. It happens because I deserve it, because I'm willing to pay the price, because I've conditioned it. I don't get fit in the gym just because I want it. I get fit in the gym because I condition it through hard work, through hustle, through grinding, clanging and banging at five in the morning, baby. That ain't easy. I got to peel myself out of bed in the morning while everyone else is snoozing. I got to peel myself out of bed with a spatula and get myself out the door to the gym. That ain't easy. But a a winning life, a champion life ain't easy. That's why most people aren't champions. So what are you committed to? You committed to your comfort zone? that will keep you small, keep you in lack, keep you in mediocrity. Are you committed to conquering? If you're committed to conquering, if you're committed to being a champion, it's going to take something. You're going to have to be willing to let go of the comfort zone. Does that make sense, guys? You can either be committed to your uh, comfort zone or you can be committed to your dream. You can't have both. It's just one or the other. You got to make a choice. It's either one or the other. So the fifth uh, barrier to breakthrough is I'll commit to my breakthrough tomorrow. I'll commit to my breakthrough later. It's the manana syndrome, right? I'll do it later. (laughs) 
I'm going to think about this. I'm going to pray about this. You know, we spiritualize it. I'm going to pray about this. And so we cultivate the habit of being a fence sitter and a procrastinator. Whatever the circumstances we think should be better before we take action. I'm going to do this when, uh, you know, I get these other projects out of the way. I'm going to commit to this when uh, I'm in better, you know, a better financial situation. I'm going to commit to this when I have more time. I'm going to commit to this when I have a better team. We will fill in the blank with whatever it is we think we need to have in place before we think it's the ideal time to take action. When is it ever the right ideal time to take action? Never. It's never the right time. There's always obstacles. There's always challenges. There's always going to be those elements of circumstance that cause us to stretch. It's never going to be easy. It's not supposed to be easy. That's why the spoils of victory are so sweet because the air is fresh. The vision and vista is beautiful. You got lots of elbow room. There's no crowds up on the summit. There's no crowds in the number one spot. It's spacious. It's glorious. It's beautiful. And there are very few people who are willing to climb the mountain and arrive at that summit because it takes something. But those who come with you, your spouse, your friends, your family, your team, those who come with you will glory in the victory with you while all the other people who are waiting for congenial circumstances will be down at, down, down at the bottom of the mountain, hoping and wishing and praying that once everything is just right, then they can start climbing the mountain. Screw that. It's never quite right. It's never quite right. There's always going to be something in your way. Is it possible that thinking like this and procrastinating and waiting for that someday kind of mentality, right? The, lead, the road called someday leads to a town called nowhere. Is it possible that waiting for that someday circumstance is one of the reasons why perhaps you're not further ahead in your career? Perhaps you're not in the place you really want to be. Is it possible that one of the reasons why you're not already making two or three uh what you're making now is because you've been in the habit of delaying and procrastinating and waiting for ideal circumstances before you take bold, intelligent, strategic action toward your breakthrough. Is that possible? I mean, what's the likelihood you create a breakthrough in your life? What's the likelihood you'll create a breakthrough in your business if you're waiting for the right circumstances before you commit to making it happen? Chances are it ain't going to happen, is it? It's going to take you being bold, courageous, and committed. True commitment has total resolve where you just decide to own the power within yourself and say, I don't care what comes my way. I will find a way over it, through it, under it. I don't care. Because the committed always find a way. When you're 100% committed, the facts don't count. You go over the, over the obstacles, around them, through them. It doesn't freaking matter. Because when you're committed, you find a freaking way to win. That's the mindset of a champion. The sixth obstacle, the sixth barrier to breakthrough is the habit of indecision. It comes from the kind of mentality that would say something like, I, don't, I never make decisions on the spot. I never make decisions on the spot. I don't, I don't make impulsive decisions. And we think we're intelligent when we say that. We think that we're making a very intelligent move by saying, I don't make decisions on the spot. We think we're being prudent. Our spouse and our friends and colleagues will also affirm that in us. You're very smart in doing that. You're very smart to you know, do all the research and due diligence and really weigh all the options and pray over it. Get and, and sleep on it overnight. That's a very smart thing to do. Our culture will also say that too, because we've got shysters out there selling sm- uh, snake oil who take advantage of us and you see it on the news. And so there's a culture that's reinforcing this mentality that you don't make decisions on the spot. It's not smart to be impulsive. It's not smart to be decisive, because if you are, you're going to be taken advantage of you. You're going to have buyer's remorse. Someone's going to take advantage of you. 
And so we have the news media, we have friends, family, colleagues, and our own experiences that will reinforce this kind of mentality. But let me ask you this, with all that being said, when's the last time you saw an uber successful person in anything who had a habit of being indecisive? You tell me one person. One person who is extraordinarily successful in anything, who is remarkably indecisive, who is habitually indecisive. I guarantee you won't find one. Why? Because successful people are decisive. Does that mean they're impulsive? Not necessarily. They, they get the information they need to make a sound, informed decision. And then when they weigh the options, they make decisions quickly. They go back on them slowly, but they make decisions quickly. They strike while the iron is hot. They pull the trigger. When they're committed to something, they get the information they need, and they strike while the iron is hot. They make it happen. They don't deliberate. They don't sit on the fence. When's the last time you saw an indecisive, uber successful person in anything? Well, case in point. So, When's the last time you saw someone create a breakthrough through indecision? Again, case in point. Is it possible that the habit of indecision may be one of the reasons why you're not further along in your career than you'd like to be? Is that possible? All top producers, all champion level producers, all great leaders are decisive. They've cultivated the habit of being decisive. They get all the required information to make an informed decision, an intelligent decision, a strategic decision, a bold decision, and then they do it boldly. They take action boldly. They make decisions boldly. They don't half step. They're not hesitant. They don't pull punches. They strike while the iron is hot. That's what champions do. And yet the news media would have you believe that's not smart. That's not prudent. Well, That's why most people are average, most people are mediocre, and most people are dead broke by the time they're age 65, relying on the government or their family, because most people believe that bullshit, and they think that being indecisive is prudent. That's why they're broke. That's why they don't move forward. You tell me one person who has that habit, who has the kind of life you want to emulate. You tell me one person who's indecisive, who has the kind of life, the family life, income, leadership that you want to emulate. You won't, you won't find even one. Why? Because they don't exist. It just doesn't come together. Indecision and living your dream life just don't come together. It's like water and oil. They do not come together. The seventh barrier of breakthrough is what if it doesn't work? What if it doesn't work? Well, what if it doesn't work is obviously always going to hold you back. If you focus on what ain't working and won't work, it'll always hold you back. Here's the question to ask. What if it does work? What if I do conquer? What if I do achieve my dreams? What if this is the defining moment in my life that causes breakthrough results? What if it does work? That's the way a champion thinks. So those are the barriers to breakthrough. I want to expose those to you. So hopefully you don't step into those pitfalls. This is Doran Aldana, the mortgage marketing coach, coming at you from the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. If you want more information on how we can help you create breakthroughs, I invite you to take advantage of a complimentary breakthrough session with us. Go to mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply, mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. And we will help you discern where you're at now, where you want to be. And if we can help you get to where you want to be better, faster, easier, We will show you how, and if not, frankly, we will be the first to advise you to pass on it. Either way, you'll get massive value, massive clarity. We'll have some fun. And in most cases, you will leave that call with more clarity than ever before on any one-hour call, and you will have the distinctions you need to create a breakthrough in your life. So again, this is Dorn Aldana, Mortgage Marketing Coach, coming at you from MortgageMarketingCoach.com. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Peace, guys. Love you. Keep being awesome. Let's rock this.